Well then, thank you so much for joining us at Hope TV, where you look and live, and particularly for being part of this conversation on Health Check. My name is Sharon Aitore Wangenye, and most definitely I am standing in for my sister and colleague, Kerry Kagiri, and we will definitely have a great time as we have a very pertinent conversation regarding matters that affect you and I at such a time as this. And to help me with the discussion today, I have with me Dr. Jacqueline Kitulu, uh, a member of the Kenya Medical Practice. Practitioners and Dentists Council, and I have uh, Dr. Willis Akwale, the chair of the COVID-19 Vaccine Task Force. And when you hear that, you most likely have a hint of what the conversation is about. We want to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine, and AstraZeneca is one of um, a big is, is a big name in this season. Many people are talking about it. But before we get to that, let me kindly allow them to introduce themselves, beginning with you, Dr. Kitulu. Uh, thank you very much, Sharon. Um, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kitulu. I am a member of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Council. Mm -hmm. That's the regulator for doctors and dentists in this country. Yeah. I'm the immediate past president of the Kenya Medical Association, which is a professor, professional association for, again, doctors and dentists in All the right. country. Okay. And I am a practicing general practitioner okay. in private practice. Yeah. All right. It's good to have you here. Thank you. And uh, Dr. E, Dr. Willis. Kindly introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. My name is Dr. Willis Sakwale. I'm a medical doctor specialized in infectious disease uh, control and epidemiology. Yeah. Uh, currently, I'm a senior advisor at the African Leaders Malaria Alliance. I work closely with His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta in his role as the chairman of the African Leaders Malaria Alliance. And uh, from the beginning of this year, I have this added task. Uh, to support the deployment of COVID-19 vaccine as the chairperson of the task force. All right. It's a great joy to have you here. Thank you. Now, let's get into this conversation. Um, COVID-19 is here with us. And as of yesterday, we had registered the highest number of infections at 1,130. And today we were at 1,127. And... Um, of course, we have taken up uh, as a, the world is into the conversation of um, having, or rather, people being vaccinated. And Kenya has not been left out. We have also begun the vaccination process. And um, the third wave is here with us. So, what is the status? Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Ari. What is the status of COVID 19, in your words, as, uh, as of now? As of now, we've entered a, a third wave. It seems vicious. It seems uh, to, to be one that is more infectious. Uh, it could potentially have high mortality. And uh, there may be many factors to this, but I always reflect uh, the story, the history I read about the Spanish flu. When the Spanish flu second wave came, a lot of people had dropped their guard. They were not uh, using the preventive measures. They had stopped. And it's the second wave where there were a lot of fatalities. So I'm hoping that this so-called third wave yeah. doesn't get us in that situation. Because if we drop our guard, then this is when the numbers of deaths will be really counted. All right. So that means we need to continue with the protocols that have been put in place. Absolutely, absolutely. More religiously than even before. All right. Um, tell me a little bit more about this um, third wave and its presentation. Are we seeing a different uh, trend in terms of the symptoms and what our patients are presenting? Currently, I'm not in clinical practice. My colleague All right, may, Dr. Be, may be best placed to say that. Mm, but okay. uh, the, the numbers, and you can see the positivity rate, is higher. Uh, than uh, we ever saw in the first and second wave. 22% and consistently for two days. Uh, that is worrying. Uh, so for me, and in fact my field is epidemiology, yes, that is the proportion I'm seeing. And basically what it says, one out of five people walking have COVID virus. Wow. Yeah, that's what it means when we talk about 22%. So, so maybe uh, if I, I pipe in there from a point of what we are seeing from clinical practice at this point, that this wave 
seems to have a lot more severe illness. Um, I think you've been seeing the messages going around, the COVID isolation wards in various hospitals all over the country, you know, in the 47 counties, are quite full. Yeah. ICU beds are taken up. So there's much severer illness this time around. Um, indeed, uh, it's come at a time when there's COVID fatigue. Everyone is tired of all the measures, and yet this is a critical time. Yeah. So we have really, really sick patients out there. Um, the sort of patients, some of whom, if you're listening to some of the cases, uh, two, three days of illness get to the hospital and pass on right, you know, just when they have come into the hospital. Yeah. So higher needs for oxygen, higher needs for hospitalization. And those are the challenges then, of course, that put a major strain on the health system. Because when all the healthcare workers are involved in taking care of the severely ill and all the supplies are taken up, then we have challenges meeting all our other <laughs> needs that are also still existing despite yeah. COVID being here. All right. Yeah. All right. I, I wondered earlier, um, rather I pointed a question to Dr. Dr. Willis and uh, he brought it back to you and it, this is regarding, uh, apart from the, the, the vax, or rather the, the, the um, disease being, or the uh, virus being vicious, yeah? yeah? Is it presenting itself in different in a different way, it, initially we used to hear of coughing and uh, sneezing and yes. probably a sore throat and something like that. Yeah. Is it true when some people say this time it's presenting itself in headaches and... Okay, so I, as I said, I am in general practice and I am seeing patients. Yeah. And I must say in the last few weeks, I, a number of patients who have presented with... We, you know, the, the symptoms still remain practically very much the same. Okay. Sore throat, uh, uh, cough... Uh, tightness of chest uh, for those who present with symptoms. But interesting enough that we still also have a vast lot who are, have no symptoms no at all. Oh. So they are tested because someone who they were exposed to t tested positive or someone who at work was positive, then they get tested and they have zero symptoms. So even when we look at our daily situation reports, the asymptomatic ones, those with no symptoms, are still the majority. But those coming in sick still have the same, you know, generalized body ache, muscle pains, uh, fever and chills, and still that sore throat and cough remain as symptoms. All right. Yeah. So it's important for one who has been in contact with someone, say, to have COVID to actually go for the testing. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have a, a positive contact, your part, that's part of the contact tracing that, yes, you should be tested. All right. But we're finding a, a whole lot of people who don't, can't even identify the contact, but then again, that goes to maybe Dr. Kuala's area in terms of when you have community spread, yeah. you don't even know who has, remembering that most of the people are symptomatic, you're probably exposed yeah. to very many. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. That's day. actually where I was going to. Yeah. Dr. Terry, what are we doing now about the contact tracing? Initially, we used to hear there's a lot of contact tracing, but now? Mm. Y y yes, now efforts change based on the, uh, the epidemiology of the disease. Contact tracing is very useful at the early stage of the epidemic. Okay. That is when you can use contact tracing to stop the spread of the epidemic. But once it really goes into community uh, and you, st you get widespread community transmission, mm -hmm. then it, it becomes a very big challenge and you spend a lot more resources trying to trace the contacts who are multiple. Yeah. It, it, it is um, then actually it does the cost benefits then are, are outweighed mm -hmm. and then therefore other measures where you need to put the money become more more efficient the mere uh, you, you now want to put resources into widespread testing mm -hmm. widespread systemic testing so that you pick cases early uh, that becomes more useful than just spending money on fuel and transport yeah yeah all right now let's talk about this vaccine, AstraZeneca. What is it, first of all, to start there, apart from it being a vaccine? <laughs> first, we, 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 we note it's a vaccine and it's not the only one. Okay. Uh, we need to realize that uh, vaccines have been tools that have been very effective to control diseases. If me, you, and uh, Dr. Kitulu were never vaccinated in childhood, chances are this show would not have been on. Maybe other people would have been here. Mm -hmm because uh, you know measles was a major killer, you know whooping cough, tuberculosis is big. Yeah. Uh, polio. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Polio. Yes. Polio. <laughs> polio. Yeah. yeah. So 
And the childhood vaccination is what stopped those. It stopped a lot of deaths. It has saved lives. It has stopped a lot of disabilities. Mm -hmm. So we must start from there that these are game changers. And then we need to realize that technologies of these vaccines has been evolving. Some diseases have been more challenging to develop vaccines just because of the way either the virus or the bacteria uh, uh, evolves. Uh, but there's been a lot of push to develop vaccines that are effective. And uh, one of the things is that when COVID struck us, there were people globally that had already started developing platforms that could be used to try and fast track a development of a vaccine. There were platforms, especially for the Ebola disease, where you are using what you call nucleic acid. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have the old traditional methods of deactivating the virus and putting as what we call a spike protein. So you are not being injected with the vaccine as, as such, but there's a protein that makes sure your body, uh, it mimics the disease in you, mm -hmm. and your body then throws a response to fight that. Mm -hmm. So th uh, there have been many uh, vaccines developed. Uh, the nucleic acids, if I may start, because that is a more recent technology, that is the platform that Pfizer va vaccine and Moderna vaccine have been developed. Okay. Now this other one, we call it viral vector, is the one AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson mm -hmm. have also been developed. And, and we have other forms, the, the, the Sputnik, the uh, deactivated forms, a number of Chinese, Sinovac, Sinopharm. So it, it is a wide range of vaccines uh, that really have been developed. All right. Mm. So why AstraZeneca for Kenya in particular? So early this year, when the Ministry of Health uh, was looking for advice, we have a group known as the Kenya National Immunization Technical Advisory Group. And they're the ones who said, as a part of our virus, there are vaccines by December that had already started being deployed, especially in Europe and in the US. And the advice was, if Kenya is to deploy the vaccine, first and foremost, it needs to have what you call emergency use authorization by a stringent regulatory authority that really looks at the data so World Health Organization is one such stringent regulatory authority. The USFDA, the British MHSA, Swiss Medic, uh, the European Medicines Agency, it has been news of late. And uh, there's one also in Japan. This, they really analyze the data in terms of safety and efficacy. And the second requirement was that the vaccine must be registered locally by our regulator or the Pharmacy and Poisons Board. So, um, and then there was a third issue. These vaccines are expensive. They have just been discovered. They are out of reach. The doses are very few. So there was a global effort that formed what you call the COVAX mechanism in which donors and well-wishers have put money to increase access to the vaccine. Because um, on average, this a dose would be anything like four to 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. But under the COVAX mechanism, which is a subsidy mechanism that is supporting low and middle income countries, then uh, a dose is, uh, uh, including delivery charges, is six to eight dollars. Okay. Yes. All right. So that explains how come uh, we went for AstraZeneca and not any other. Yes. So, no, I'll explain a, a two, three other considerations. Okay. Now, within the COVAX mechanism, once you are there, any vaccine which is available there can be allocated to you. Now, in Kenya, February is the month that we are really trying to get the first doses here. Uh, during that time, uh, Moderna did not have any doses available for us to get. Mm -hmm. Pfizer had very limited doses, and the Pfizer vaccine requires uh, what we call sub-zero storage temperatures. Uh, so if we brought that, it would be very limited to a few urban areas, and therefore the issue of equity would, would then arise. Uh, but not to say we are not going to get, we, are going, we have uh, liberty to even mix all of them. Mm -hmm. As the doses become available, we'll get more of this vaccine. So we can get either AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Pfizer as of February. I know WHO is reviewing some other vaccines, 
Johnson and Johnson, uh, Sputnik. I think th there are a number of others. And once they also become available under COVAX, since we are signed up members, we can access them. Yeah. All right. Okay. Just to remind you, uh, you can get in touch with us if you have a question. 22232 is the number. You can also get to us on Facebook. That is um, our Facebook page, Hope TV Kenya. All right. Back to you, Dr. Kitulu. Yes. Is AstraZeneca safe? So I like that question. And I'll start by saying I am vaccinated right. with the AstraZeneca vaccine. Okay. I was vaccinated last Thursday. My second uh, dose comes up on 13th of May, eight mm -hmm. weeks from the first dose. So I am standing here as one who's vaccinated, not as just talking. <laughs> and I am encouraging each and every one of my patients to get vaccinated when their appointed time comes. All right. So I consider the vaccine safe. This is one of the vaccines, um, when you're looking at what we want out of a vaccine, is to prevent severe illness, to prevent death. Those are the severe outcomes. And actually with all vaccine, uh, um, vaccine preventable illnesses, that's entirely what you look for. You don't ent some, you're not exactly looking for total, you know, zero disease, but you're looking at sev less severe disease, mild disease. So um, the COVID-19 is a flu-like illness, and you've had a cold, you've had things like that. So you can have a milder illness that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. But at this point of the third wave shows you what we are trying to prevent by vaccination. Right. The severe illnesses that cause hospitalizations that overwhelm the hospital system. Right. So looking at this vaccine, it is capable of doing that, preventing the severe illness, reducing hospitalization and death. Mm -hmm. That is a safe vaccine. And oh, by the way, all of them, can do that. Right. When you're looking at studies that have been done um, to come into this point where the vaccine was released, in all the cases of all the vaccines, um, so there are different arms which are done. So there are some who are given the vaccine, others who are not given. So the ones who are not given are the placebo group, so they don't know who they are. But so, and then they go out into the community. Mm -hmm. So what, um, what happened is in all, in, in that when you look at the comparison, so those who got the vaccine and, and those who didn't get the vaccine, of course, those who didn't get, uh, very many got infected. Those who got the vaccine, a lot fewer got infected. But what was classic that in that group that got vaccinations, none of them had severe illness that required hospitalization. None of them died. So with all the cases that have been vaccinated, there has actually been no death. That's what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, in the first and second wave, we knew people dying. Mm -hmm. In this third wave, you know the persons. It has come closer home. Mm -hmm. You actually know a person. You say, that's someone I went to school with. That was my teacher. Yeah. That is my aunt. That's my relative. So we, it has come that much closer. And I think that's the imperative for us now to appreciate what the need for a vaccine is. Last year, at, at a time like this, everyone was saying, you know what, we, we can only pray for a vaccine, that we'll get a vaccine that will prevent this. We now have those vaccines. This is the time to embrace them. All right. Yes. What about the, the side effects that come with it? With it, okay. So it, it, it's good that you ask because I got <laughs> I, I I had Some. very mild mild side effects okay. and which is pain at the injection site. So actually very mild discomfort, more like a dull throb a day or two. In fact, all I took was Panadol uh, twice, and that was it. So that's one of the commonest side effects: pain at the injection site. A few others will get headaches, um, fever, chills, body aches, muscular pain, uh, nausea. But all those have been very short-lived. Within 48, 72 hours, they are all gone. All right. And they are expected side effects and very similar. Uh, you know, I like to relate this vaccination with childhood vaccinations because I think everyone is familiar with childhood vaccination. Yeah. And when children are vaccinated, you know, the, um, the parents usually will ask, Eat a letter fever. fever. Eat a letter um, totatalia sana. So yeah. it's the same things. And that's similar to what we, ex we get with this vaccination, mm. but they pass. All right. Yes. And that also means that it varies from one person to another. Absolutely. It will vary. So with the, we uh, were just discussing this in a group on which we are seven people in that particular group and mm. everyone was discussing their side effects. So out of the seven, two of us had just a little of the injection site pain and that was it yeah and then uh, there's uh, some who had intense fatigue for two days then others had generalized ache and nausea but all of them within 
48, actually 72 hours max, we're back to normal. All right. Yeah. What about this issue of 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 the clot? This there are things that have been making rounds on social media yes. concerning clots, Dr. Dr. Willis. Yes. And uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why most people are afraid of it. That's why some people hesitated, but uh, now with all the information available, there's no reason to hesitate because of the fear of a clot. And let me say that uh, clot formation is a serious adverse event. Uh, and what happens ideally when a health product like this vaccine is under what you call emergency use, when such an incident is reported, it is supposed, what, what a country should do is to suspend and investigate with an aim of establishing whether it is the vaccine or it was a coincidental occurrence. The issues of clots are, running, are common in our society. There are many causes of clots, and people like smokers are very prone to forming clots. Uh, people who have uh, abdominal um, uh, tumors, malignancies, people who have sedentary life sitting all the time, you're, you're prone to tumor, uh, clots. Mm -hmm. Now, but also to add, uh, the, the early stages of um, COVID-19 disease can actually also lead to clot formation without the vaccine. So what then happens is that you investigate to be sure and confirm this person did not have an underlying condition, was not prone to any, and that it is. So all investigations done within the European Union, and even yesterday, the study from America, there was no association between the vaccine and the clots. All right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So um, t tell me about the, the, the dosage and the intervals at which um, uh, the vaccine is given. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ari just talked about uh, the second dose mm -hmm. that she's expected to take. Yeah, let, let me also say these vaccines will come, the administration schedules will differ. They are not all the same. Okay. And it is best on what was found, especially during clinical trials, to establish the best time to give a second dose. So some may be two weeks, some may be three weeks. AstraZeneca initially was four weeks, but their data also showed any time between six up to 12 weeks will still uh, be able to, for the second dose to be administered. So the, um, the advice to the technical task force that I lead was eight weeks would be good enough so that we cover many vaccination with the first dose, which were like we got one million. If we had taken four weeks separate, then we would only have vaccinated 500,000 people and reserved the other dose. But now we are able to vaccinate a million people and when the second consignment, which is expected in the early April, maybe first or second week, then we'll be ready to start giving the second dose in May mm -hmm. when we began the vaccinations. All right. Mm -hmm. So there, there have been questions, and uh, Dr. Kitulu alluded to that, mm -hmm. that um, questions that if one takes this um, vaccine, if one is injected with a vaccine, is it... I mean, does it give a long-term um, protection? protection? Mm -hmm. Does it give a long-term protection? Or will I now then, after the first and second dose, will I need to take it again? Yes. Now, about these vaccines, there's still a lot of unknowns. And the scientists are burning midnight oil to be very sure that they analyze data, they do the right observations. Um, you see... Starting from the disease, where people also expected that if you have the disease, then you have natural protection, it started becoming apparent that there were cases of reinfections. You got the disease, you got reinfection. Now, with this vaccine, up to now, how long it protects you is not known. But what is known is that if you get the first dose, you get what we call a partial immunity. And this starts developing. What does that mean, Dr. You, 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 you are not fully protected okay. from the impact of the disease in terms of severity of disease and uh, death. So, in fact, in many of these vaccines, the first dose gives you anything between 50 to 60 percent protection. And when you get the second dose, which is a booster dose, mm -hmm. then it, that jumps to between 80 to 95 percent. 
So the need for the two doses is so, so crucial. I hope nobody who has got the first dose is saying, ah, I'm already vaccinated. Mm -hmm. The second dose is what now gives you that full protection mm -hmm. yeah, uh, against a severe disease. Now then the, the question naturally is for how long? Exactly. How long nobody knows because these vaccines just started being used the other day. Mm -hmm. But people are doing modeling and, and really looking at and uh, because corona is also in the flu group of viruses, mm -hmm. uh, it is anticipated it may give up to one year. And I think there was a publication in the British Medical Journal uh, early this week mm -hmm. showing that it is potentially able maybe to give one year. Right. But, but the, that would not be, it's not what everybody wants to hear, but it's now what we have <laughs> to use. <laughs> Indeed, you know this virus, you're calling it the novel coronavirus, yeah. you know? It's yeah. a new one. Mm. So new. everything about it is new. The virus is new, the vaccines are new. So there's a lot of information that keeps on being replaced. What we knew uh, in January is not what we know now and is not probably what we'll know in June. Yeah. So we're, I mean, but information is being churned out as it comes along. All right. Yes. All right. And I would, I would love to get to the question of um, the cost and... Um, also, who is getting the vaccine now and when the rest will get the vaccine. But just before that, allow me to uh, remind our dear viewer that you can get in touch with us. 22232 is the SMS line. Kindly just drop in your comment or question and the doctors we have will be glad to answer. You can also get to us on Facebook. The page is Hope TV Kenya. All right. So, Dr. Willis, um, let's talk about first who is getting the vaccine now frontline workers because there has been this question um, that many people I've had many people ask yeah so if this vaccine is safe and uh, Dr. Kitulu has said it is safe because she has taken it yeah and I've taken it you too. also have sitting, taken yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the second um, <laughs> for the second dose so how come that some of our leaders you know I've had people say the president has not taken it so and so has not taken it so why why um, am I taking it? Is it an issue of who comes first? Absolutely. So one of the things uh, when we were doing our deployment plan that was a major driver was that the vaccines during this first phase are not just available. Very few manufacturers, everybody is scrambling to get them. The rich people are whole, uh, buying most of them. Even if you go for direct procurement now of the approved ones and uh, the WHO, it can take anything like four or five months before deliveries are made. So we took cognizance of that and said the best way is first and foremost to protect the frontline workers. The people likely to be exposed to infection, yet they provide such essential services that keep this country going. And obviously health, health workers are really frontline. Mm -hmm. You see now there's a surge. If they are all sick, we'll take care of those who become sick. Mm -hmm. That will become a challenge. Uh, security forces, law and order, they're the ones out there ensuring things are moving. Mm -hmm. uh, teachers have to be uh, healthy so that our school goes on. Um, and we also consider the clergy. Um, our deployment plan talks of uh, religious instructors, and actually that includes the clergy. Uh, we made that clarification because they are the people visiting the sick in the hospital. Mm. They are the people conducting the final rites. Mm. They are the people visiting families that have been bereaved mm. and encouraging. They are exposed. So th these, are, these are the people who constituted the, real, uh, the, the first line. Mm. Or, and, and as a priority, we said we vaccinate them. We took the numbers and uh, it came to about 1.25 million. So when you look at our deployment plan, those, that's our target for the month of March to June. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we will even achieve it before the end of June. All right. So after, after um, you've, you're done with the first uh, dosage to these uh, essential or frontline workers, mm -hmm. will you now get a second dose for them or you will move on to the next um, bunch of people, Kenyans, so to speak? No, we, first and foremost, we must reserve a second dose. As I've said, that is what will give you full protection. So if we vaccinate one million Kenyans, when the next consignment comes, we, we actually expect consignment under the COVAX 
-hmm. of 2.5 million doses. Yeah. They, they may come in two shipments. But immediately the first shipment comes, the 1 million has to be a second dose for those vaccinated. Now, we, we are going to have a little bit more in addition mm -hmm. after we give a second dose. And the consideration the task force and the Ministry of Health in general has looked is that we didn't know the third wave would be hitting us in March. Now, our principle was protect frontline, but now we are faced with the third phase and people are dying. Now we have to save lives. Mm -hmm. We have to save those that are most vulnerable. And we looked at the data and realized 65% of fatalities are occurring in persons 60 years and above. So priorities therefore have to change and consideration of now also vaccinating to protect life is a major consideration that uh, you'll be hearing our proclamation on that uh, in the coming few days. All right, okay. Um, currently, is, is the vaccine being offered at a cost or is it free? And um, how much is it if it is at a cost? It is not at any cost. Okay. At whatever vaccination post, it is absolutely free of charge. Even if you are a Kenyan and a, your pocket has absolutely nothing, yes. even a five cent, turn it outside, inside out and walk to a vaccination post. Okay. And if you can be vaccinated, send us a text, take a photo, any such post. The ministry is very clear and uh, the cabinet secretary Mtai Kago actually said yesterday, mm -hmm. if we get any post that has been given to offer this free of charge and they are charging, they will be closed. Yes. So the vaccine is free of charge. Absolutely. But currently to the frontline workers. Frontline workers. Yes. So um, there's something Dr. Kitulu mentioned earlier, yes. and I think I'll be coming back to Dr. Willis, yes. uh, regarding those counties that have already started doing this, offering vaccination to people who may not necessarily be considered to be frontline workers. Yes. Let me say that the onset of the third wave caused panic. Uh, you know, initially there was the AstraZeneca issues and people are still saying, you know, many Kenyans are usually very slow in joining queues, <laughs> except on the voting day. Voting people are very early. <laughs> but on any other matter, they will wait until the last day. Are they closing? Have they said they are closing? Then they start rushing. Uh, and, and we expected that, by the way. Yeah. But now the third wave comes and it scares everybody and everybody takes to their heel to join the queue. Yeah. Uh, the, the county authorities and also the national level mm -hmm. facilities yeah. up to now should ensure we strictly follow the target groups because we don't have enough vaccines. And yesterday the cabinet secretary made it very clear that the fault is not the person vaccinated. It is the facility that has broken the guidance mm -hmm. that has been provided. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I, I think part of uh, the cues that we've been seeing, for me, is also it's been reassuring mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of, of the supposed, supposed hesitancy. Mm. Uh, that showed a very different picture mm -hmm. with people lining up at Mbagathi from 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. wait, uh, waiting to be vaccinated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in a, for me, that was a, a, a reassuring thought mm -hmm. in the sense that, yes, people have appreciated the need for the vaccination, However, I think it's just the re-emphasis that there is a phase one. The phase one has the healthcare workers, it has this, uh, the security personnel, the teachers, the clergy, as he said. So that's phase one. And then shortly, the phase two is going to start, where we have the elderly and those with the, you know, the, vul the vulnerable, with the other comorbid illnesses, the diabetics, yeah. the heart disease, and all the others coming into that category. Yeah. So the phases, I think Dr. Kuala has re-emphasized, will be even re-emphasized what mm. follows next, depending on how the shipments are coming. Mm. But they are going to set to happen. And then finally, in the third phase, will be the one for every, you know, any other Kenyan who, who, who's, who feels vulnerable and one wishes to be vaccinated. Mm. But of course, it's prioritized based on those who are more likely to be uh, most affected by the virus. And indeed, the frontline healthcare workers, if they all go down, there'll be no one to look after the patients in the hospitals. Right. Uh, the elderly, indeed, the third wave is showing us that that's a, a very critical group. Mm. 
-hmm. So I'm sure that in terms of expediting their process of when they start, that's what, those are all on the table, but they are all set to be vaccinated. All right. Yeah, and I'm reassured by seeing people mm. clamoring to mm. find a place to be vaccinated. Mm. So I think that's a good problem. And thanks for putting it that way, because yeah. <clears throat> when we released the first data for our three days of vaccination, mm -hmm. it was 9,000 and people... Uh, uh, declared hesitancy. Yes. I really got surprised with that and I knew they are going to be proved wrong sooner or later. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and, and for me, I think um, the acceptance, actually if you sit in my office mm -hmm. and, and, and you see the kind of request for people, some working in also still critical areas, mm -hmm. but just because we do not have enough doses, enough. we cannot say yes. But it, it pains me because they, they justify. They tell us we are the people doing this. We are the people doing this. We need these vaccines. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much for keeping us company. We have this conversation going on with the chairman of the COVID-19 uh, Vaccine Task Force, Dr. Willis Akwale. And we have with us Dr. Jacqueline Kitulu, who is a member of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council. Remember, you can send us your uh, question or comment on the number 222. Uh, 22232, that is 22232. You can also find us on Facebook, Hope TV Kenya. And we will take a very quick break, but when we come back, we'll be taking some of the questions that you have, and we will also be picking your phone calls. Would you please stay with us? every Sunday for unlimited uplifting powerful worship only on extended worship Welcome to Activate. It's a good morning. Good morning. Kickstart your day with George and Kerry on the sweet hour of prayer. And welcome to Activate, this being the station where you listen and leave Hope FM. From Nairobi to the world. Great music just for you. Activate. The only show that keeps you activated. Yes, indeed. Activate every weekday morning from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Only on Hope FM, where you listen and live. Join John Carson every weekday as he takes us on a journey through the Bible. Whoever shall seek to save his life, if you go back to living for yourself, you're going to lose it. But whoever shall lose his life, Give up his life for my sake, he shall preserve it. Enjoy interesting, knowledge-packed, yet simple teachings through his humor and in-depth understanding of God's Word. The last people that tried to put God in a box, literally, he rose again. He wouldn't stay in their compartment. If God was small enough for me to figure out he wouldn't be big enough for me to worship. Tune in to Hope TV for John Cusson every 10 p.m., 4 a.m., and 10 a.m. weekdays on Hope TV, where you look and live. kuletea burudani safi kutoka wanamuziki wa nyimbo za sifa na ibada mahojiano ya moja kwa moja na mafunzo ya hali ya juu dhamira ya mtu ikifa anaweza fanya anything, anything. because kile kinanitofautisha na mbuzi ni dhamira there was this time niliambia Mungu hmm. 
mimi samahani Mungu lakini naona umenifanya mimi kuwa daraja. Oh. Sitaki. Lime inu. Lime inu. Ni mahali pa uchipuzi na ulezi wa vipaji. Oh. Mwimbaji anaweza itisha akitaka lakini unajua hiyo ni sauti sauti hajanunua. Eh hujanunua hiyo hiyo ni hiyo ni umebarikiwa nayo. So hiyo unaweza muupe ane aidha bure ama lakini hii pande nyingine sisi tupe invest ni investment tunaona. Tunabeba mwili lakini mimi sikujua hii ni maagano nafanya. Ungana naye mwalimu Shaban Brima kila Ijumaa saa mbili jioni na marudio kila Jumamosi saa kumi jioni. Machozi ya furaha. Nishangaze baba. Thank you so much for joining us at Hope TV. This is where you look and live and you are on health check with me Shira Naitore. I have with me Dr. Akwala who is the chair of the COVID-19 uh, vaccine task force and I have with me uh, Dr. Jacqueline Kitulu as well who is um, a member of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Council and we are taking your questions on the number two two. 232 that is triple 232 and you can also find us on um, Facebook Hope TV Kenya all right so welcome back um, thank you Sharon Dr. Mm -hmm. Ari. we get to our questions and uh, I'll begin with this one who says um, now this is directed to Dr. Willis uh, this one says, ask Dr. Ari why now the pastors uh, in the clergy are considered frontline workers yet are not part of essential service providers. Is there a contradiction? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, 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 it is not. I know the, the deployment plan mm -hmm. uh, talks of, um, initially we all called them um, frontline health workers and essential workers. But actually during a lot of deliberation by the task force, and I remember that Saturday morning, we, we just decided to call all of them frontline workers. Okay. So anybody in the frontline offering services, these are essential services, we now just refer to them so, that, so as not to confuse people. They provide essential services, they are frontline workers. All right. Yes. Okay, so there's no contradiction there. Well, uh, probably the, what the person is asking then, does that mean that um, with the curfews and all that, the oh. clergy is then <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, given a, <laughs> a pass? <laughs> now, now I can see like, the, 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 the actual side of the question. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that one, I, I don't know. The, 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 the people who give the passes, I think my colleague here is best place to answer that one. <laughs> at the time when we create those passes, at yes. least we are, these are for the doctors okay. and, and dentists who we regulate and who are on our <laughs> register. So those are the ones we give. Okay. But of course, there are other there are other levels of essential workers. All right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hmm. Now this one says, "What an informative talk." Ask the doctors. Um, Ask the doctors this, I am pregnant and an essential provider. Can I get COVID-19 vaccine? She's watching from Meru. Thank you so much. Not at all. In fact, if she ever goes to the vaccination post, she should, anybody, and not only her, mm -hmm. anybody who suspects they are pregnant, they have missed their menses, they should not get the vaccine. And not because it has been found to have anything but it's because the data that was used to license it for emergency use did not include uh, any uh, um, use in pregnant women. It also did not include use mm -hmm. in uh, uh, children below 18. Mm -hmm. Remember, this time, a lot of, of it was adults. Mm -hmm. So that is the only reason that there is no data. But currently, the scientists are trying to establish data in, in pediatric population and they may do the same for pregnant women. Right. And if the data shows there's no problem, then licensing will be provided for their use. Right. And that also explains the reason why people have been asking, why are we going to vaccinate all the way up to 2023? Mm -hmm. It's because currently we are actually going to vaccinate only the adult population. Mm -hmm. 
which is about um, those above 18 is just 50 percent of, of our actual population so when you see our target of 15.8 million it's against an adult population of about 24 million yeah. or 25 okay. yeah and that would give us 60 percent coverage which is high within the adult population mm -hmm. but as the vaccines then become uh, licensed for use in adults we will then start those vaccination in, 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 in children and under 18s will start the vaccination campaigns at that time. All right. Is this just for the AstraZeneca or is it for all vaccines, uh, COVID vaccines? For those that have undergone regulatory approval by stringent authorities, mm -hmm. it applies to all of them. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. There you go. Now, this one says... Um, do I need to wear a mask and keep distance if I have gotten two doses of the vaccine? Michael from Kisum. Um, thank you for that one, Michael. Uh, of the vaccination mm -hmm. is to ensure that you do not get severe illness that requires you to get hospital hospitalized and possibly have you dying at the end of it. That is the purpose of vaccination. So even those who are vaccinated may get some form of mild disease, which they might not even count significant. The significance of that mild disease is that they can infect somebody else. Mm. So the issue around vaccination is that when I am protected, I protect you. Mm. And we are all protected when we are all vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So that is the essence of vaccination. It may not eradicate the disease, mm -hmm. but it makes you just have a mild illness that doesn't require you to be hospitalized, doesn't really interfere much with your work. But because you can get that, it means that you can still spread the, um, spread the infection to others. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the protocols of hand washing, sanitizing, uh, wearing your mask, and social distancing remain. Mm -hmm. And that's why even when we came in, I said, well, keep our masks on. Yeah. Yes, we are distancing, but it is important to keep our masks on. And especially like for me, who's a frontline healthcare worker, mm -hmm. I see patients, I'm a risk to you. So by, by, I protect you by being protected as well. All right. Yes. I think that answers uh, a question. Something I've also seen uh, making rounds uh, concerning the Honorable Kiraito. Yes. He took the vaccine yet. He, he was said to have tested positive. positive. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to, I think, what Dr. Akwale was saying the time in which you produce an immune response mm. and also how much immunity you get after the first dose. Mm. So you do not begin to mount a significant immune response until about two weeks after you're vaccinated. Yeah. But the first dose, again, only gives you partial immunity. Mm. So the second dose boosters that and then gives you the full immunity. Mm. Now, uh, so in the, in the time span in which he got that, yes, it, was, it is possible to yeah. get the infection. Mm. All right. All right, this one says, I am 63 years and diabetic. Can I get the vaccine? Uh, those are the so-called, there are these groups, uh, 60 years and above, mm -hmm. uh, but with including maybe 58 onwards. Uh, they are at most risk. That is where most deaths. Currently, they were not part of the first one, but because of the third wave and the impact it is having, mm -hmm. uh, as I've said, there's a review of, of, of our target groups and uh, and, and I, I believe in the coming few days they, there will be a statement as to what we, we are thinking about them all right just be patient they need to be patient a little bit and actually all Kenyans there is just the issue of limited doses available yeah. uh, but definitely there is a lot of discussion in government uh, including uh, the role the private sector may have to play so that we increase access to uh, vaccines that are available. All right. Um, could, it, could it be that what uh, Joseph is asking, Dr. Terry, is um, him being diabetic? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. He should get the vaccine. Okay. Yes, d despite uh, having any underlying condition, um, uh, chronic conditions, whether it is diabetes, it's hypertension, it is cancer, you should get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I think the only time you, you may not be vaccinated is if you have a fever. And that is why if you go to any vaccination post, the first thing they are taking is your, your temperature. temperature. Because that could be expedited by the, uh, the, 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 the dose. 
So anybody with an underlying condition, chronic condition, medical, mm -hmm. is at very high risk and they should get vaccinated when they are called on the queue, which may not be very long from now. All right. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if, <laughs> if this again is yours or you will do as it did to the question of the clergy. Yeah. This one says, uh, will we see the places of worship closed again due to the third wave of infection? Yeah, I, 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 one thing I know, and I've, I've been following the ministry's uh, directives, mm -hmm. nothing is off the table. Obviously, if the situation gets worse, uh, measures that will lead to the lockdowns we saw could easily be brought back. And Kenya will not be unique. Um, see, the, the countries have gone to second lockdowns and third lockdowns. As, as the, because this virus behaves in very funny ways. Yeah. So nothing is off the, table. off the table. All right. Okay. If you have a chronic disease, and I think this is um, almost the same as the one we answered, and they say sickle cell, can I be vaccinated? And if yes, what are the side effects? So um, basically, uh, in terms of, of those who need to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Those with chronic underlying conditions, yes, need to be vaccinated, especially so, because then they have a weaker immune system. Right. But yes, they do need to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. The side effects, as I think we discussed them earlier on, yeah. are, 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 not, uh, are not across the board. Some people will have them, others may not have them, but the commonest being uh, pain at the injection site, uh, body, uh, muscular aches, uh, joint pains, mm -hmm. uh, headache, and uh, fever and chills, but all very short-lived, and about 48 hours usually in most people, and they clear. Mm -hmm. But we are encouraging all those with any comorbid conditions, and in fact, one of my patients sent me a message today from, she's in Nanyuki. She said, should I get this vaccination if I'm called for have it? Mm -hmm. um, so she's hypertensive, yes, she's diabetic, she's over 60, and I was, D -d -d my doctor, do you think I should? I said, you will run very fast. Yeah. When they tell you it's available, run. <laughs> Don't even look mm. back. Get the vaccination. Yeah. So uh, she said, okay, that's reassuring. But that's what we need to know, that those groups are actually especially at higher mm. risk of severe illness. Yeah. So they need to be vaccinated. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, now I'm looking at my time and we need to release Dr. Willis. But before you can go, Dr. Ari, just one question and then you will give us your parting shot. Um, this one asks, is the second, um, are the first and second um, doses of the vaccine same or are they different? Yeah, an important point. Uh, if you get a particular vaccine type, so in this case we are using AstraZeneca, and the actual trade name is COVID Shield. COVID Shield. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's the actual name. Okay. But it, it also had its, its, its research name, Chadox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they can change them. Yeah. Then you really get that. So you cannot get uh, AstraZeneca and second dose Pfizer or yeah. Johnson and second dose. Mm -hmm. So once you have gone on AstraZeneca, finish your dose with it. Okay. If it is Pfizer, finish your dose. If it is Moderna, first and second should be Moderna. There should be no mixing. And that is the real challenge my task force is faced, that that part of the logistic, we must get it right. Mm. We must reserve a second dose. E even in other countries, they have had that challenge, but we are hoping we will get it right. And that is why those who have gone to vaccination, you get a text message. It tells you the type of the vaccine, it also tells you the batch but, number that you received. Uh -huh. Then on the, it will send you a reminder, I think a week or a few days to the next dose. It will be reminding you you got COVID shield, batch number this. Yeah. And with that message, they will know that you really have to be vaccinated mm -hmm. uh, by COVID shield. Okay. Yes. All right. Sawa, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Please give us your parting shots before we release you to attend to other matters. Yeah, what I would tell Kenyans, really, we have an arsenal here. We have an opportunity the, that really has been given to us by the government and by a lot of partners and well-wishers mm -hmm. that vaccines are available to protect you from infection, but most significantly to reduce hospitalization. 
Can you imagine right now the ICU beds are full? full yeah. In Nairobi, with the vaccine, those admissions would not be where we are. Being in an ICU, the mere sight of an ICU, the cost of being in an ICU, these are the things we need to think for you to make a decision. What is important is that the Minister of Health is giving you information, the experts in and out of government are available to give you the right information so you make an informed decision. That informed decision may be just what is between life and death. I am vaccinated, Dr. Kitulu is vaccinated, yeah. you should be vaccinated <laughs> and all of us should be vaccinated. Thank you very much. All right, Dr. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Willis Akwala, the chair of the COVID-19 Vaccine Task Force. We appreciate you for coming. Okay. Thank you. At this point, we'll take a very uh, quick commercial break, and then I'll be back with Dr. Uh, Kituli. Did I say commercial break? Well, <laughs> I don't know what they have for us. <laughs> <laughs> we are just trying to do life but we do not look forward to doing life just casually we are looking for the spice of life how do i call myself a christian but i really don't take time to understand what easter means you know does that mean you go back and start again from square one uh, as a baby in christ if jesus is the way then sgr is already sorted i mean salvation grace and redemption you know sgr whose responsibility is it when it comes to the content that we produce. The output is actually the result of what you're doing, you know. Even our dressing, some of it is also dictated through, you know, our hairstyles, I need to have, be rich like this, you know. Join us on Life Chat on Hope TV, coming to you very soon, where you look and leave. TV where you look and live and this is Health Check with me is Dr. Kituli Jacqueline and we are having a conversation around the uh, COVID-19 vaccine uh, rather the COVID-19 status and the COVID-19 uh, vaccine which we have in Kenya which is AstraZeneca they just give me another name no <laughs> Obi Shield. <laughs> Obi Shield. I wonder why they didn't keep that name <laughs> Anyway, mm -hmm. so Dr. Ari, we still have some questions that are coming in, so kindly just help us answer them. Someone asks, um, well, this I believe was answered earlier. They're talking about a one-year-old, and they're asking if this person can be vaccinated. No, so the vaccination is not for any of uh, and under 18. It's for persons uh, above 18. Um, and the reason, as Dr. Kwale had, had mentioned, is because there's no data on those under 18 or those who are preg pregnant uh, women. So for the moment, uh, it is not to be used on any uh, persons under the age of 18. Okay. But as we said, it's a new virus, it's a new vaccine. We are looking at information as it comes in. Yeah. When the information is right for the pediatric age group, we shall get direction on that. Okay. Now, which are the centers for vaccination other than Bagadi Hospital, someone asks? All right, so there is, um, if one goes to the Ministry of Health website, they'll be able to find the list of, of facilities, but there are facilities in each and every one of the 47 counties. Okay. All the level five facilities and going down to level four facilities um, the, uh, as COVID uh, vaccination centers. So wherever you are, whichever county you are, if you start at the level five hospital, mm -hmm. You shall, you shall get information on where else, but also looking at the Ministry of Health website, that information is there. All right, and allow me to ask, is it that um, 
how how does it go when someone presents themselves themselves for vaccination? Yes, are they required to give an identification? How do I get to know, or how do they know that this is a frontline worker? Okay, so uh, uh, so once you go to a vaccination center, number okay, but for the frontline healthcare workers, uh, we also all have various registration uh, uh, numbers. IDs, so that you know your work ID or your, um, your registration number uh, at, at the medical council for those who are doctors or dentists. Mm -hmm. or yes. Okay. Um, now, this question is <laughs> it has been asked a million times. Yes. Can we wear? Can we meet up with people without masks once we are vaccinated? So I will, I will not tire of answering that question. <laughs> Emphasize. I will go over and over it again. Yes. We are going to continue wearing our masks and wearing our masks correctly, not wearing masks on the chin, not wearing masks covering the mouth and leaving the nose, wearing our masks correctly, washing and sanitize, or sanitizing our hands as frequently as we can, mm -hmm. and social distancing will continue. The vaccine prevents severe illness, prevents hospitalization and possibly death, but does not prevent you from having a mild infection so you can still spread the infection to others. Mm. So all those protocols remain. Mm. And one advantage actually in this one year we've had the COVID, we've realized a lot of the hand-washed illnesses, <laughs> diarrheal diseases and the common colds, they, they actually yeah. all decreased. Yeah. Because we were keep, we were sanitizing, we were washing our hands. Yeah. So we are not going to stop that. All right. Yes. So we keep sanitizing. Keep sanitizing. Washing your hands. mask on and keep uh, distance. All right. Yes. You you are a member of um, the council that regulates doctors and dentists. Yes. There has been, uh, or rather, um, should I say, a spike? Many many doctors are said to, or many. Uh, have um, contracted the vaccine. Is there something more that is being done or that ought to be done mm -hmm. from your point of view to at least, you know, because if the doctors and people who are supposed to then treat the rest of us are not there to do so, what will happen? Yeah. So, it, and, and it's, of, of course, within, with each wave as it comes, the, there's more sick people. Yeah. Uh, they all end up in the hospitals. And that's why the frontline healthcare workers then are, you know, highly at risk. Yeah. And that's, it's not just the doctors or nurses. It's those in the labs, in the, um, the radiologists, the, the cashiers, the, the, the ones who are cleaning, the yeah. administrative, they're all at risk being in the, in the environment where, you know, uh, severely ill patients come in. So for sure, um, we do appreciate the, the fact that the, um, the Vaccine Task, task Force uh, noted appropriately that yeah. those are critical workers who, who need to be vaccinated first. Um, that along with all the other measures of providing the appropriate uh, PPA, the you know, personal protective equipment, mm -hmm. all those go a long way into ensuring that we are protecting our healthcare workers yeah. along with you know, the people who are in their immediate surroundings. So um, it, it, the vaccine is one major way. Yeah. Appropriate PPE being availed in all those centers is also crucial to ensuring that we are protecting those healthcare workers. Of course, a lot of these processes also involve engaging with, with the, the said, you know, healthcare workers in, through their professional associations, you know, carrying the message forward, uh, training for infection prevention. And indeed, uh, many of the, of, of the medical associations have been, uh, and even the nurses association, clinical officers, have been part of the training to ensure that other healthcare workers know also how to prevent infection uh, for, for themselves and yeah. to be able to pass that out, you know, out in the community. Right. So it's, um, there's, there are various prongs of, <laughs> of intervention to ensure that our healthcare workers are protected. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Tell me, Dr. Ari, um, with regards, with regards to, um, there's been a question of the, the storage of the vaccine and how um, safe then it is, uh, it is or how effective it is yes. after a certain period of time. Yes. What's the conversation around that bit? 
So, um, and this applies to all vaccines. Mm -hmm. There's something we refer to as the cold chain. Okay. So that the vaccine has to be kept at certain temperatures. Uh -huh. Now, the AstraZeneca va vaccine, actually one of the advantages and the reason it was, you know, and it's not Taking only in Kenya, it's actually in Africa. Yeah. It's the one that's most widely been sp uh, spread out. And uh, if you read through the African Union um, uh, statement on, on the vaccination. So you'll have that AstraZeneca is the one that's most widely spread. I mean, our numbers compared to Europe and America are, minim are dismal, but mm -hmm. that's what we have. Yeah. And one of the advantages that this vaccine can be refrigerated at, you know, it, 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 the normal fridges. Remember, we, we have been vaccinating for, you know, for years. for years. So we vaccinate children. Yeah. There's a Kenya extended program of immunization. Yeah. So we have fridges already in place. So the, uh, those, you know, immunization fridges, so it can be kept mm -hmm. uh, safely in that. Unlike some of the others which need um, sub-zero temperatures to, yeah. you know, to be kept safely. So if we, I mean, in terms of the equipment, we already have it. We have been vaccinating our children. So nothing exceptional in that sense. Yeah. So we do have the facilities to keep the vaccine at the right temperature and therefore avail it at a temperature where it is still active. All right. Yes. Okay. So that is taken care of <laughs> with, the, with the current system that we have in place. Absolutely. All right. Okay. There's, there's, there's something called herd immunity. Yes. What is herd immunity? Okay, so herd immunity means, so it, it, it basically when, when you begin to immunize, it goes back to the question you asked, why, why have I decided to be vaccinated? Mm -hmm. So when I am vaccinated, remember, uh, I, I protect you in the sense that if I am less likely to be ill, then you're less likely to be ill. Yeah. But I, I can't be the only vaccinated one. Mm -hmm. We need to be a number of us who are vaccinated. So we are reducing the amount of illness that is circulating. All right. So when you reach a certain critical point where most people have been vaccinated, there's less illness, there's less illness to spread, then you have a sense of um, that greater percentage who are protected in far protection, even on the others who are not yet, you know, you'll never reach 100% because mm -hmm. there are people being born, there are people coming in from new places, yeah. but there's a sense of protection around them because a vast majority are immunized. Um, this is, uh, we'll go back even to, to childhood vaccines. There, there, there are places where, uh, you know, after, the, you know, the, the, in, the, in the last century, one mm -hmm. of the greatest inventions has been vaccination. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why infant mortality went down because of vaccination. Mm -hmm. But you found that there are pockets of areas where they decide not to vaccinate. And you end up with outbreaks of illness coming again because then the herd immunity has been lost yeah. um, because of you don't have enough numbers of people vaccinated. So we need to build that critical number. And I think the target is trying to reach 60% of the adults. So within there, then we'll have a, a good enough level of immunity to ensure that we, we have less uh, likelihood of infections. But okay. Yes. All right. Well put. What are the impacts? Um, of, of this vaccine, fine. We have talked about the, the, the side effects of taking the vaccine, yeah. but are there um, immediate short-term and long-term? What is the immediate short-term and long-term effect of this vaccine? Um, immediate uh, short-term and then long-term. Uh -huh. so, Long term is difficult to answer because remember, we have only started vaccinating since December yes. in the countries where they started. I think some of the countries with the highest levels are like the UK, Israel. Those are you know, some of the places where they have high numbers of vaccination. Uh, uh, let's not forget um, uh, UAE. Yes. But, um, so, but that's three months of information. So long term, we can only tell as we go along. Uh -huh. But I think one of, the, one of the things that we can look at, like in the UK, which has vaccinated over 25 million people in, in, within their country in those three months, their hospitalization went down by two thirds, by 67% dropped by the fact that they had immunized. So it, those are some of the effects that we can see. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, the severe illness, the hospitalization, the deaths uh, dropped. The same to the US. So I, I think we'll see more of that as, as the data builds up as we move along. Right. Immediately, of course, as we said, the, the vaccination doesn't have 
an immediate, immediate effect mm -hmm. because once you're vaccinated, your body requires time to build an immune response. You will build an immune response within about two weeks of having been vaccinated. But with, after that period, then you have a level of what you call partial immunity. You're not fully, Im you know, not fully immune to the, um, to, uh, to whatever, to the virus. Yeah. But by the second dose that boosters this first one, then you have the, 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 you know, the highest level of immunity. So in, in that sense, so a vaccine doesn't cure you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what people are looking for. No, it won't that's do that. That's what people are looking no, for. No, it, it will not cure you yes. immediately. It's giving you protection. It's an enabling your body to appreciate. And let, let's just look at vaccines very simply. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, if you have an enemy, an enemy who you don't know what they look like, they can come and overtake you because you have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. But when you have been shown that your enemy comes dressed in red, your enemy comes wearing this and that, yeah. so you recognize that enemy. So when you're shown that enemy the first time, you're like, ah, so that's what the enemy comes in, mm -hmm. looks like. So the next time they come in, you may miss a few things, but you generally you, you you can tell that's an enemy, and you you can mount a, a response. Mm -hmm. um, by your booster dose, you are fully clear that the enemy comes in red shirt, red trouser, <laughs> red shoes, and anything that looks like that is danger, and you will eliminate. Yes. So in a sense, it it takes time for your body to build up that immune response. So there is not an immediate protection, but the protection comes in with the full immunity, and for this vaccine, it's. The importance is protecting you from severe illness that requires hospitalization and death yes. as, an out, as a final outcome. Right. That is what we are looking for okay. in terms of protection. All right. Now we have someone who seems to have joined us probably um, not too long ago. So allow me to ask this again for their sake here. Yeah? And just in case anyone else joined us and they didn't get uh, to hear the question answered. Uh, she says, please ask Dr. Tari, can a vaccinated person inf infect people with COVID-19? And do we only have AstraZeneca vaccine in Kenya and not any other? Okay. So, as with all vaccinations, so I'll keep on referring to all vaccinations because we are very familiar with vaccinating children. We are vaccinate, uh, So, we all know about polio, BCG, and all that. Yes. So, all those vaccines prevent you from having severe illness. Mm -hmm. So the same with the COVID-19 vaccine. Yes. It will not eliminate, it won't give you zero infections of, vaccine, of, of uh, COVID-19, but would give you a milder form of illness if at all you got exposed and got infected. Yes. So what it does, however, prevent, and, and from the studies that were done in the trials up to the point where the emergency use was approved, mm -hmm. is that in all those trials, those who were, uh, participated in the trials, there were no deaths, there were no severe illness that required hospitalization yes. in the groups that were vaccinated. And that cuts across each and every one of the vaccines that have gotten emergency approval. Not just the AstraZeneca one, the Pfizer-BioNTech, the Moderna, the Sputnik, all, all of them there was 100% uh, effective in reducing severe illness yeah. and, uh, and death. So mild illness, yes, you can get, and that's why you will continue to wear our masks, sanitize, <laughs> and social distance. <laughs> okay, so is it only AstraZeneca that we have in Kenya? I think Dr. Terry had answered that earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that's the only vaccine. For the, we... for the time being, that is what we have right now. Okay. But as I said, with the different um, uh, procurement uh, schedules and all, we may be we may get in the other vaccines yeah. as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Please remember, we are on Facebook, Hope TV Kenya. You can also get us on two 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 three two. That is triple two, three two. As we continue on with this conversation, I. Uh, we will also probably just one, one, have one or two calls. I am waiting for my director to just give me that go. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we have time for one or two calls uh, before we call it a wrap in just a short while. So should we take a short break? We'll be right back.
join us every Sunday for unlimited, uplifting, powerful worship. Only on extended worship. Thank you so much for staying with us. And if you just joined us, Karibu Sana, we have time for one or two questions uh, coming through our phone line. All right, we have a caller online. Hope TV, hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Yes, my name is Joyce. I'm calling to ask. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm asking... Um, if you have an allergy to egg, are uh, you still eligible to take that vaccine? Or will there be a reaction? If you have an allergy? To egg. eggs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you Thank for you. your question, Dr. Terry. All right. Thank you for that question. Um, basically, if, um, if you do not have severe allergies to eggs, the vaccine sh should be uh, safe to take. Um, it is not actually made in, um, and has no component of egg, but where there is a known severe allergy, then that will be a contraindication. But where there are mild allergies, then it, there is no problem. You can have that vaccine. All right. Yes. There you go. All right. If you have a question, call us. We have a few minutes before we can release Dr. Tari. And I'm sure she will be glad to answer your question. As as um, as we wait for another caller, I have someone who says, uh, "Well, that's that's another." <laughs> Can one get reinfected with a coronavirus? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you can get reinfected with a coronavirus, mm -hmm. and that is why. Um, so there's a concept of natural immunity that once you have been infected, you do form a level of antibodies. But as, the, um, you know, as we looked at the, the progression of the disease over the last year, it became evident there are those who got infected and then got another infection. Um, meaning, therefore, that the natural immunity is not significant enough to protect you uh, from a, a reinfection. And that's why uh, even those who have had the illness need to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Because what the antibodies you make from the vaccination and from the natural immunity are, are, are pretty different and you are uh, more protected by the vaccination because the natural immunity doesn't appear to be adequate. And that has been evidenced by people getting reinfected. All right. Yes. So it is possible. Dr. Ari, uh, the European countries, this one says, have rejected the vaccine AstraZeneca. So why are we taking it? Is it... What? So, so actually, if you look at uh, um, information as of two days ago, the European agency that looks at uh, drug safety, uh, after reviewing, um, you know, systematic review of, of safety da data of over 17 million uh, vaccinated uh, persons with the AstraZeneca vaccine in the EU and the UK, actually confirmed that there was no correlation of the of the purported side effects with the um, uh, with the AstraZeneca vaccine and actually to to prove that they had actually agreed that there was no associated risk the health minister uh, of France was actually shown live taking his AstraZeneca vaccine yeah. so the countries that, and I think Dr. Akwal explained this earlier on where the side effects that seem to be related they need to be investigated and yes those countries which had suspended the vaccination did it as part of the protocol but at systematic review definitely uh, came forward that there was no associated risk with the um, of uh, uh, with the covid uh, with the uh, astrazeneca vaccine right. and have reinstated their astrazeneca vaccine programs all right yes. thank you dr Terry. just before we wrap up would you please give us your parting shot so my parting shot is very simple 
in the last century, one of the greatest uh, inventions has been vaccination. And so many children's lives have been saved because of vaccination. In this last year, when we had the whole world silent, no planes, no cars moving, and everybody still because of this COVID-19, we prayed for a vaccine. And we were hoping that, that knowing that this was the only way, prevention was the way. Cure did not seem to be coming through, but prevention was what was the way. So we now have these vaccines. They have been deployed. We have seen the benefit to the countries where they have widely vaccinated, the UK, the US, the numbers of hospitalizations, the severe illnesses, the deaths have dropped dramatically once they started vaccination. Mm -hmm. So my parting shot to you, if you are there, when your turn comes, get the vaccine. That prevention is the way with this illness. Get your vaccine when your turn comes and the different phases have been outlined. And whichever vaccine you're offered is good enough. It doesn't matter what brand it is. Mm. If it has been approved with by a country, we know then 100% it will prevent severe illness, it will prevent death. So get that vaccine. And meanwhile, mask, sanitize, <laughs> social distance. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Harry. Thank you, Sharon. We it was my you. pleasure being here. Thank you so much for coming. All right. All right. Dr. Jacqueline Kitulu from the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council answering our questions and helping us with this conversation regarding the status of the COVID-19 in the country. And of course, the VIG, uh, the elephant in the room, the AstraZeneca vaccine. And earlier we had the chairman of the COVID-19 Vaccine Task Force, uh, Dr. Willis Akwale, and we thank you both for coming. Thank you so much for keeping us company. Uh, remember to um, keep watching Hope TV because this is where you look and live. May the good Lord bless you. My name is Sharon Naitore Wangenye. <laughs>